On this video, I want to talk to you about one or two really, really tall plants or fairly tall plants in, in a couple of cases. This being the tallest that I'm going to talk about, and I often talk about this one. This is from the Wuhan province of China, and it's called Miscanthus lutaria riparius, and it loosely translates as living on the bank side. Now, it is a very, very invasive grass, as I talk about all the time. Very invasive indeed. So invasive, I have to contain it in this bamboo root barrier, which is within the sheep bale feeder ring. It goes down 900 millimetres. And that stops it getting out at all. It stops it in its tracks. You don't want this one getting around the garden. Now, the beauty of this one is that it has this lovely look above it. If you're into grasses, then this is a nice look to have in your garden. It's a true stunner. And I absolutely love it. It's probably becoming my favourite grass of all time. Well, this year anyway. Now, one of the beauties of this grass is that it, leave, it loses its lower leaves, as a lot of grasses do. So it starts losing them. I come round and help it now and again because... I don't want them blowing all over the garden. And as it loses the lower leaves, it goes from this green colour that you can see there. And down the stem, it goes to this, what I would class as a plum colour. A ready plum colour there. And it's an absolute stunner. And it will do that on every single stalk or every single um, blade and even back from here you can see how that suffuses up the stem itself i absolutely love this grass i go on about it all the time but as i tell people you've got to be so careful because this really can be invasive and is invasive so i contain it in the bamboo root barrier as i said because I don't want it escaping. I have another one further down the garden in another pot and that's containing it again. So what I'll do is I'll walk down to that one now before we go into much more description and we will show you that one. So if you can't be bothered to put it into a root barrier, then you can contain it in some sort of a container, but the container needs to be fairly big. Now I've, I've got it in this oil drum, this old oil drum. I've put this one onto a slab so that if it decides it's going to try and poke its way out the bottom end of that, I will be able to see it and catch it in its tracks. Again, this is getting to a, a good tall size and again, it is starting to produce this purple suffused look up the, up the stem. Now, one thing I did notice on the other one was that it's starting to send out these little side shoots. These ones here. Now, I know from experience on the Arundo Donax that I could probably get those growing into new plants. And I think I might. I will show you how to do that as we go along, and I will pull those off and get them rooting and get them planted up as new plants. So it's fairly easy to keep. You just need to keep your eye on it. You need to water it. And every now and again, if you're going to contain it in this type of container or any type of container you really do need to give it some sort of a feed at the beginning of the year just to keep it going not that it needs it i must admit not that it needs it but everything needs feed at some point so give it a little bit of feed this is another great grass this is ostradaria richardii or richardii depends how you want to say that now it's uh, formally known or not formally known, but it has a synonym of Cortadaria, which a lot of people know it by, Cortadaria richardii. And uh, you, you really need to let go of that name because it's actually an Ostradaria. But I love this one. Those plumes are just absolutely beautiful. And they do look elegant, and it is described as the most elegant pampas grass, even though it's not a pampas, that you can find. And I think it is. It's an absolute stunner there. It makes a wide clump, so again, we need to be 
mindful of that. As I'm looking at it at the moment, I'd say, I'd as a guess, that's about five foot. I've given it plenty of room. And I, what I tend to do is I put sacrificial plants in around it. And when the plants get to the size I want them to, if those plants that I put in as sacrificial plants are in the way, they come out. That's why they're called sacrificial plants. You can remove them at some point. So that is a stunning grass. That if you're a serious grass collector, you'll definitely want in your collection. Now, a lot of people are not aware that bamboos are true grasses. But they are. Now, this one is doing really well this year. It's now been in three years. And it's looking really, really healthy now. It is a clump former. Bamboos are not all invasive. And this one is a Thamnocalmus. So it's called Thamnocalmus. Crassinodus Q beauty and it is truly a beauty now on the smaller leaves these ones here you will get these going into into sort of like deep reds and when they first come out they're a little bit lighter red and then over time they get a bloom on them which is this color here and really that's I would say that's a kind of bluey green bloom on it but it's really nice now, with a lot of bamboos, you that it actually pays you to strip out some of the, the canes themselves. So some of the little canes, and I'm going to do another YouTube on this, some of the little canes will be taken away in favour of the bigger ones. Because remember, the culms that come up, the culm is the, new, is the new plant. You might know them as canes, but they are called culms. Uh, they get thicker and thicker year by year. So some of the older canes inside there are a lot thinner than the newer ones so each year they will get a little thicker up to the point where they're kind of at the thickest they'll ever be it will continue to become a bigger clump which i'm looking forward to and i probably will at some point take a split from this and the, the easiest way to do this is with what we call a grafting spade so an heavy duty spade uh, some people call it a rabbiting spade but I call it a grafting spade. And I would dig away part of that. And to be quite honest with you, I would probably do that a little bit earlier than now when the growth first kicks in. All bamboos do tend to struggle once you've done that to them. They're not happy with it and they do tend to sulk for a bit. But eventually they come good and they forgive you and they tend to look great. Now I've got this in front of Kathy's arbor seat, which is deliberate. It was put here originally to act as a sort of a, a screen to what would have been a swing, what would have been Kathy's swing. But we've gone for the arbor seat instead, and I think a much better choice. So it looks really good. So when you're placing things like this, you really do need to bear in mind where they're going to sit next to. So that is a true grass, a bamboo, but a thamnocalmus. And I love it. This is another Miscanthus, and this is a giganteous type, and it's called Jubilaris. And it's got a longitudinal stripe in it, so it goes up the leaf like that, instead of cross-banded, which the zebra grasses are. But it does make a lovely dense clump, as you can see there. It will eventually make seven foot through the season. It's quite early to come up as well, this one, which is... Another reason that I quite like this one, because you're not waiting too long. Some miscanthuses can be a bit of a pain when they're, they're relatively young and take forever to come up. But this one comes up practically straight away. Unfortunately, it doesn't flower, and neither does the other one I showed you, Miscanthus lutaria riparis. They do flower, but not, not in our summers. They're not long enough or hot enough, really. But we, we forgive them that because of the look that they give you there. So there you go, some taller grasses that I absolutely love and wouldn't be without. Okay, I'll talk to you on the next one. Ta-da.